face command is probably a, a little bit misunderstood in, in everything that it can do. So for a very simplistic method, it's like an extrude, but it doesn't prompt you for an extrusion depth because it uses the thickness parameter to set that. So you can see here that I've, I'm, my options here are pretty limited. I am creating the base feature because it's a new solid. It's automatically selected this shape because there's only one profile in there. And I'm gonna click OK to, to create that. So you can see that the original feature was created. Now, another thing I could do, let's just create a, a quick uh, shape over here on the side here, is that when I go to create my secondary face feature, what's new to 2016 is the ability to actually create separate solids. So you can actually create a multi-solid sheet metal component within 2016, which you couldn't do in the past. Okay, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sketch on the end here. So let's take this face here, let's just zoom in a little bit. Let's uh, create a new sketch. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sketch a rectangle. So we're gonna use that rectangle and notice how I've picked the, the bottom face there. Let's just make this too wide here. And when I create the, the face feature in this case, it's gonna auto recognize that it's connected to that edge there. Now in this case, I'm, I'm gonna flip the direction so it goes outside, but it's gonna automatically recognize those connected edges. I'm gonna click okay and notice how it's gone through and actually built that bend. And because of my settings, you can see it's actually cut a corner relief or a, sorry, a bend relief in there as well. Now let's create a sketch here and let's go parallel. So I'm gonna offset this a bit. Let's say that we want this to be you know, six inches away. Um, let's create a sketch on that face and let's just create a rectangle. So I'm gonna create a rectangle here again that's um, in there and I'm gonna create a face. What I'm gonna do in this case is I'm actually gonna use the edge option here and I'm gonna say I want it connected to that edge. So you can see how it's automatically taken that edge and connected it there, and it's expanded the dialog box. So from the dialog box here, I could actually flip this to 45 degrees, I could flip this to 90 degrees, um, so you can see how it, it's, it's going to extend this face there. I can also do full radius. So what it's gonna do, it's gonna use that full radius um, and build a, a rounded face in there. Now this option right here changes the fixed face. So you can see how this is fixed, this one's going to extend. If I click it, then this face is fixed and this one's actually gonna cut in there. So I can use that to kind of bounce that back and forth between there. Now let's go to the 90 degree option. And what I'm gonna do is actually say, let's make this times two. So I'm gonna take the default bend radius and actually real time in here within the dialog box, I'm gonna change that, that bend. I can also real-time override the unfold options. So you can see that in this case, it's, it's going to use the K factor, but I could change that if I had other things set up. And I can do some things to the relief shape. So how I want the relief shape to look, you know, maybe I'm just gonna tear it in this case if there actually, there won't be any in this case, but if there was, I could change it with that. So I'm gonna click okay, and we can see that it's gone through and created that for me. Now you can really use that bend feature even if it's not parallel. So again, let's create a sketch on this face and let's create a rectangle up here. Actually, you know what? Let's do something with some tapered faces. Let's do, you know, something like this. Let's go, let's go up, let's go over. And the idea here is that Inventor supports disconnected faces. So I can create a extrusion here or a face feature here, and then using the edge option, I can come in here and I can pick that edge and it will connect that for me. So you can, you can kind of have this face floating, like this is where I need it to go for this particular bracket and then let the software figure out how to connect it. So I'll click okay, and you can see that it's put that feature in there. Okay, well, I'm just gonna undo that and I'm going to create that face feature again, but this time I'm not going to use the, the edge connect option because sometimes what you might wanna do is you might wanna lay those faces out. So again, I'm building a, a box and I know I want two faces here, I need one at the bottom, but I wanna connect it after. So I'm gonna use the bend feature and using the bend feature, I can say, let's connect those two edges and you get the same effect. So in this case, I'm gonna click okay and you can see that that is that bend. If the faces were parallel, you get those same four options for 90 versus 45 versus the full radius and such. So you can see it at a very basic level, the face feature is an extrusion that defaults to the thickness. You create your sketch, you extrude it, um, and you go from there. But there's actually quite a, quite a bit more there behind the scenes where it can create bends, um, it, it can create um, you know, different styles of bends depending on the location of the face. 
Um, it can create multi-solids, so you can use it to, to generate different solids within the solid. So it really is a, a super feature um, within the sheet metal environment.